In 16 days, on the 25th, the Supreme Court will hear a case involving President Trump and immunity. This time, it's criminal immunity, and it's involving both official acts as president and unofficial acts. And this is a quote we've pulled. This is from page nine of Jack Smith's brief. Quote, a former president is subject to federal criminal prosecution for personal and official acts that violate valid criminal laws. Now, if you don't put any limit there, I mean, where, where is the limit? I mean, the president declaring war, then war kills people. War kills civilians. There are civilian casualties. Killing people who aren't a legitimate combatants could be a crime. What about suspending habeas corpus in the United States if you're Abraham Lincoln? Can he be prosecuted? I mean, th think about all of these different situations. Declaring martial law post 9-11 putting the military on the streets in Washington, D.C. and New York. Uh, I don't believe there was any act of Congress to do that. I believe it was just done. Uh, later, there may have been act of Congress. These are decisions the president has to make quickly that, again, um, may, val may, again, violate some law, but yet we, we kind of like let those laws be superseded by the need for, by only one person in the United States, and that's the president of the United States, that would still cover... If you're doing anything personal that's criminal or unofficial that's criminal. But you know what their problem is here is ensuring that an election was valid, even though they believe Donald Trump was crazy for saying it wasn't. Ensuring an election was valid would, would fall under an official act of the president, Logan. And that's why they have to be so broad that basically you could start prosecuting presidents for decisions and policy you don't like if it didn't go perfectly. Essentially... Jack Smith wants to criminalize and offer up for prosecution virtually any act entered into by the President of the United States. So, for instance, in 2011, uh, President Obama uh, issued a drone policy which led to the killing of an American citizen, um, Anwar Alawaki, on October the, 20, on the, October the 14th, 2011. That was a drone strike, and arguably, if Jack Smith is correct, we could now prosecute President Obama. Similarly, President Obama ordered the extrajudicial killing of Osama bin Laden. I am sure that some international law was breached by that activity, although it was supported, I would submit, by the majority of American people. So there has to be, in my judgment, some limitation placed on Jack Smith's very broad theory. Presidents are entitled uh, to engage in acts that are designed to ensure the effective functioning of the executive branch. Jack Smith wants to take that right away, and I think the Supreme Court should deny it. I think the reason they're having to argue this is because the baseline of what they're up, the charges on President Trump were that the election was invalid. And the President of the United States certainly has a valid um, interest. So it would be an official act that was valid to some extent in ensuring that the election was fair, that the election laws were followed. I mean, certainly a president has that. When does it cross over a line to, uh, is it some criminal act to question that? That, to me, is a very difficult line for the Supreme Court to draw. And I think the line is arguably fact-specific. And so the appropriate remedy in this case, I think, is for the Supreme Court to send the case back to the trial court for initial judica adjudication on the issue of immunity and then allow that particular issue to be litigated up through the appellate courts and perhaps back up to the Supreme Court once we have a factual record on the ground. That's number one. Number two, I would argue that the position that the ACLJ has taken, which is a middle course, uh, is, uh, is the best approach. In other words, the president should be immunized with respect to official acts designed to further the enforcement of the law. He has an obligation under the Constitution to make sure that the executive branch uh, functions effectively. And so 
Uh, Jack Smith, in my judgment, has taken a very extreme position, and he's taken an extreme position in prior cases, and some might argue that he seeks to usher in what might be called a reign of terror by special counsel prosecutors for political disagreements. And that was the outcome of the Bob McDonnell case. The Supreme Court issued an opinion, 9-0 against Jack Smith. So Jack Smith has a distinguished reputation of overreaching. And so I think he's overreaching in this particular case as well. So here's where it gets unique, though. Former. So when you're current president, I think most people agree, unless it's a civil matter outside of the presidency, it has nothing to do with official act. But uh, official acts of a former president, this is something very unique. And so this is why the Supreme Court has taken up this very question of can a former president be prosecuted for official acts that a prosecutor believes they could convince a jury that that president violated uh, a valid law of the United States when they engaged in that act. And this is an important point on this immunity case that he's even having to do this case before the U.S. Supreme Court of all places that they are going to weigh in because what he is trying to do is somewhat new. So he is pushing the line of what the Department of Justice has tried to do in the past. So this time it's a former president and they want to prosecute for uh, official acts as president. So if you officially as president believe the election was stolen and you say something about it and they believe that you're doing that because you are trying to steal the election, not because you actually believe. So they're saying even if it's an official act, you can be prosecuted as a criminal when you become the former president. That is what they're putting forward here. And that is why ultimately I think you see the Supreme Court is taking the case, Renee, because this is a new way of pushing that line, Logan. And it would, it would be a line push that would change for future fu- future presidents would have to make decisions differently if this case goes uh, the way it could against President Trump. So you really have to, if you're a judge, you've got to really sit there, even if you're on the left, and imagine that if you do this, this also happens to your favorite liberal presidents as well, and they can be much more easily prosecuted for official acts. So these are duly elected presidents of the United States uh, uh, taking acts that the Department of Justice believes were criminal, because of what? What was in his mind at the time? Which didn't you have to really get into intent? Did President Trump really have an intent to steal an election? Or did he believe, truthfully, that the election was being stolen? Thus, he could officially take actions as president to make sure that it wouldn't be. Who gets to make the policy decision on that? I think it's the President of the United States, not the Department of Justice, even if they strongly disagree with the conclusion of the President of the United States.